I purposefully set up this shot to look the opposite of cinematic. So let's go through some simple steps to see how close we can get to the film look. If we want our shots to look like movies, then first we should think about composition, the way we position the camera. It's a huge topic, but here are some common techniques from films that we can start with. In an average scene, the camera is at the same height as what's being filmed. So let's bring it down to eye level. Since our character is facing to the right, we'll move the camera until there is space on the right hand side, which usually looks more natural. Now probably over 90% of shots in films have a dead level camera. So let's adjust it until our horizons are flat. Now most tripods do have a leveling bubble so we can be precise. So here's what we started with and here's after we followed some basic framing guides. Next up is white balance, calibrating the camera to the color of our environment. Right now everything looks blue, so let's change the white balance to a daylight setting since we've got natural light coming in through the windows. I'm shooting on the Canon T3i by the way, but what we do in this video is applicable to pretty much all digital cameras. So here's before we change the white balance and here's after. Okay, this next one is huge if you're going for a cinematic look. Lighting. Now, typical cinematic lighting is quite soft, so I'm setting up a bed sheet clipped to some light stands. That gives us a large surface area to bounce the light from. I'll also close the curtains so that any changes in the light outdoors don't affect our scene. We can point any lights into our bed sheet and what bounces back will be nice, soft light. Lastly, I'll block the direct light from reaching our character so it's only the reflected light that affects our scene. Here's what the natural light looked like with a strongly defined nose shadow and a really bright background, whereas our DIY bed sheet bounce gives us much softer shadows. We also have a much darker background, which is pretty common in movies to make the foreground stand out. So we've put some thought into composition and lighting, which I think are the core parts of the film look. So now we can go into the details. Shutter speed controls how much motion blur there is, as demonstrated by this shot with a fast shutter speed of 1 250th, which gives us a choppy look without any blur, as seen when we pause this shot. If we change the shutter speed to 1 50th, which is the traditional cinematic standard, then we can see how blurry fast moving things become, just like how we see things in the real world and in most films. So as we change the shutter speed to 1 50th, it reveals a side effect. The lower the number, the brighter the image will be. So now we have a really bright image, but we can fix that easily by lowering the ISO, which you can think of as a last resort for making the image brighter. That's the great thing about using lights. It means we don't have to use a high ISO, which results in digital noise that isn't very cinematic. So there we go. Now in these behind the scenes shots, you may have noticed that we really can't see what's outside. It's just completely overexposed. That's because all cameras struggle to show something really bright at the same time as something really dark. The way a camera deals with these high contrast situations is called its dynamic range. And it's an important part of the film look. We can improve our camera's dynamic range by shooting flat, reducing the contrast and saturation while recording so that we have the best foundation for color grading afterwards. I've been using the Vision Color Profile for the last few months. I've been pretty impressed with it after hearing more and more that those super flat profiles like CineStyle might not really suit cameras like this that have relatively low bit rates and color depth. So since we shot with the Vision Color Profile, we'll definitely do some grading. I've done a whole video about this, which you can find at the first link in the description to see how I usually do it. But for now, here's what it looks like before color grading and after color grading. I think it's important to mention that most of this stuff can be done on all digital cameras. You just need to find the right buttons for your specific camera and you're done. But I think lighting and composition make the biggest difference. So we should focus our efforts there rather than on just the camera settings. And let's not forget that creating cinematic images isn't what filmmaking is all about. There are lots of different sides of filmmaking and they all deserve equal attention. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.